Hi and welcome back to what is hopefully the final part of my TV collection um, video. Uh, so I've got the full series one, two and three. I've got them that way. Um, this is quite a violent crime series and it's it, you look at the story from the perspective of the person investigating the crime or one of the people, the main person investigating the crimes and the serial killer. That's not a spoiler, it says on the back of this one that he's a serial killer and you know straight from the off what he's doing so there's no guessing what's going on it's more sort of the chase you you know you can't you want them to catch him and stop him but at the same time paul specter who jamie Dornan plays is kind of a likable character and you kind of find yourself almost wanting him to just stop what he's doing and, and you know be normal and not get caught and because he's, he's a dad and he's married and he seems a really good dad and kind of, he seems like a nice guy in his everyday life, but obviously he's doing some terrible things. But this is quite graphic, so I don't think this one would be for everyone. But I really like Gillian Anderson, obviously, because I like The X-Files, so I was excited to see this one. And it was definitely one that, um, you know, I really enjoyed and that I will watch again. Uh, then I've got The Missing series one and two this is based around missing people cases and the only thing that series one and two have got in common is this character julian baptiste who's investigating the cases this one's based around a young boy that went missing james nesbitt plays his dad and this couple their daughter goes missing in this series and um these are really sort of engaging storylines again with sort of all the different threads leading to a big finale and twists in the you know in the story and things like that they keep guessing right to the last second I, I really like that about this and this one really is well made you know it's um set in a different country both i think this one's in france and this one's set in germany but they also travel to switzerland and i think there's another country i can't remember a middle eastern country i think um one of the characters travels to and i just found this was like really well made and um i think I found that this out of all the crime series that I've got was one that was most kind of like a film shot to the quality of sort of a film that you'd see. Uh, I'm looking forward to, I uh, say I'm looking forward to series three. I'm hoping there's a series three. I think there is definitely another series, but it might be a prequel series, which I'd like, but I'm kind of hoping that the will still go with the series three sequel series because it kind of ended on a cliffhanger and I really want to know what happens next um, because the main character Julian Baptiste it was kind of more a, a personal life kind of story thing that it ended on and I, it's, I don't know why they'd end it on that if they weren't going to show you what happened next um, then I've got Happy Valley series one and two this is a really gritty kind of police drama set uh, around the main character who's played by Sarah Lancashire she plays Catherine Kaywood she's a police sergeant and um, although there's a lot of like crimes that she's dealing with uh, there's also a bigger picture going on to do with her personal life uh, series two has got uh, another larger crime going on as well as continuing the story of what's going on in her private life um, but again this one's quite uh, violent maybe not quite as much as The Missing but this is definitely one that maybe some people might find too violent if you're not but then I think if you're into crime series I, I imagine, that, I, I think you would like if you like crime series I really think you'd like this one it's probably the one I would recommend the most if you haven't seen uh, and then I've got DCI Banks um, series 1 series 2 series 3 series 4 and series 5 uh, I love DCI Banks, this is definitely one of my favorites i really like the main characters in this one the crimes are really good too they're set over like a double episode two episodes like double episode type thing um so i really like that because you're not waiting too long to find out what happens but it's not too short and brief um you know you get to know a lot of what's going on and there's plenty of investigation but you're not waiting too long for sort of payoff for it but like i said what i like the most was definitely sort of the main characters and the stuff that was going on in their personal lives and how it sort of connected sometimes into the crime um, story. Um, I was really sad to see this one go. I definitely think this one could have continued with more series because it's kind of one where you see a lot of the personal lives of the investigators. 
but I suppose they have to end sometime and I'd definitely watch the series again because there's no more to watch. I think I'll definitely binge watch um, all five series again at some point um, this year or next year. Uh, so that's it for what I've got to show. I'll just quickly show what's on my um, watching pile. So a lot of the things on my watching pile I've kind of shown the rest of the series already, but this is one that's a complete box set that's on the pile. But I've mentioned it, um, Wiring the Blood. And this is a fairly old one. I think this started in the 90s, possibly. Uh, I don't know if it says on here. I'm almost sure it started in the 90s. Or very early 2000s, I think. I might be totally wrong there. I've not actually looked it up. But I remember quite a long time ago hearing about this. And I've always been a fan of um, Robson Green. But I wasn't really into crime series at the time, so I didn't watch it. But um, we've really got into this recently and we've sort of binge watching the whole box set right now. We normally sort of flip between, you know, we'll watch one series of something, then flip to a, another series uh, to watch a series of that and then go back and forth between a, a, two or three different series. But we're, we just keep going with this at the moment because we're really into it. This is a bit of a violent one as well. So again, maybe not for everybody. There are really some quite graphic kind of crimes in this. But I really like the main characters, particularly Robson Green's character. He plays sort of a, a criminal psychologist. Is it a criminal psychologist? Is that what you call it? Um, yeah, well, it's a psychologist who ends up kind of um, using his abilities to help uh, solve crimes. He's really quite unusual, um, but intelligent. And I really do like this one. Um, it's... Uh, I think an hour and a half per episode so they're quite long episodes but that's quite good because you really get to see plenty of um, you know what's going on with each crime they're quite detailed and complicated but at the same time it doesn't go on for uh, tons of episodes you know each crime is wrapped up at the end of the uh, sort of hour and a half episodes I think possibly in the later series maybe the last or the last two series the 60 minutes so I don't know if the crimes then run over two episodes I'm not sure and uh, then I've got Big Train. I think I've actually shown this on the shelf. In fact, I'm almost sure I have. It's now in my watching pile because I'm re-watching this. It's just a really silly, weird, kind of dark comedy. There's, I mean, it's hilarious, but there are some things that are just so ridiculous. But if you like weird comedy, which I kind of do, then I'd highly recommend this one. I remember seeing this on TV uh, when it first came out. Uh, when would this have been? Early 2000s, maybe? I think. I think it was early 2000s. I remember seeing a little bit of an episode and just thinking how weird it was. And that's it's one of the things that actually got me into this kind of crime series. Um, then I've got The Accused. This is just the French version of the box set. Um, so it's got French writing on it, but you know it's in English. It's you know, There's nothing different about it inside. It's just I couldn't get the English box set at the time. Uh, this is basically totally separate stories each episode is its own thing different cast different story and it's about somebody who's been accused of something and some turn out to be guilty some turn out to be not guilty i've only watched uh, three episodes i think but so far i'm really enjoying it and it's nice that you can just put an episode on you don't have to know what's happened before you could you don't have to watch them in order really um and so far the stories that i've watched have been really sort of engaging ones and i think they're about an hour each um yeah i'm really enjoying in that one and then I've got Peep Show, uh, Series 7, which is the series that I'm on. And I showed the second series of this, People Like Us. This is the, we've got one episode left to watch on Series 1. I have seen some of Series 2 before, because I remember seeing some of it when it was actually on TV. But I wanted to go back, because I knew that I'd missed some episodes. And as I said before, it's basically looking at different jobs, like a photographer, a lawyer, a... Um, I don't know, a secretary, something like that. And then kind of taking the mess out of the job and it's just really stupid kind of stuff to do but it's it's really funny 